Welcome everyone, I'm Nars with The Game Hers. And I'm Erin. In this first of four part series, we will go over basic programs to use to set up your streams. We will go over two programs to set that up. Each have their pros and cons and usage and we'll go over that in this segment. For beginners, we recommend Streamlabs OBS, and for intermediate to advanced creators, we recommend OBS, aka Open Broadcaster Software. So let's get started. Streamlab OBS is a great broadcast software for those new to streaming. So head on over to Streamlabs.com and download the program. OBS is another great open source streaming platform that has a lot of freedom to create the stream of your dreams. We'll go over each of the programs side by side, showing the differences in each. To download OBS, you gotta go on over to obsproject.com. Once downloaded, run the program. Upon launch, this lab software will ask you to connect using an account on one of the following platforms. On Slobs, continue and click Twitch. The program will then have you log in via your Twitch account. Verify the account with the code and your Twitch account is now connected to Slobs. When you first arrive at your dashboard, you will see some sections. The mini feed, scenes, sources, and mixer. On OBS, it's scenes, sources, audio mixer, scene transitions, and control. At the bottom of slobs, you will see where you can test widgets, record, set a replay buffer, or go live. The next tab on slobs is the theme store where you can find all sorts of cool things for your streams. We will get to that in a second. OBS doesn't offer this feature. To get overlays, you will need to hire someone to create it or create them yourself. Thankfully, Stream Elements, Player.me, and the wonderful World Wide Web have many free overlay templates to choose from. Once you're happy with what you have, proceed. Next tab on Slobs is the Cloud Bot tab. This tab manages all moderation configurations for automatic chatbots. Chatbots are programs that run during a stream that can allow access or restrict viewers using keywords. Slobs has CloudBot within its software, but may still need to be configured through Streamlabs' website. We will get into this in part four of this series. The next tab in Slobs is the App Store. There is a variety of apps that can be easily installed into Slobs to create a more engaging stream. Most apps require you to purchase, but some are just free. Please be aware that by adding multiple different types of apps requires a computer to handle the CPU processing power that comes with the demand. So keep that in mind guys. Down below is the dashboard button. This will take you to the Streamlabs website to configure alerts, donations set up, merch, charity events, and more. You can also learn more about the Streamlabs All-Stars program and your stream analytics. The next tab is the layout tab. This edits your slobs dashboard layout. You can adjust, delete, or add different elements for your dashboard. Once you're happy, click Save Changes. The next tab is Studio Mode. This allows you to show one screen on stream while editing another without your viewers seeing your changes. This mode is used more for advanced streamers and isn't necessary when first starting off. Thankfully, OBS also has this feature for use. The next tab is Settings. This is an important tab when setting your live stream. We will go over this in the part two of this series. All right, so let's make some scenes. There are many ways to make your own overlays and scenes. If you want to avoid hiring a graphic designer or avoid making them yourselves, you can download a theme from Slobs' theme shop. A lot of themes require you to purchase a Prime membership to use. But if you don't want to pay for some themes, you can get a free generic one for now. When clicking the theme shop, search for keyword free in the themes area and find one that you like and then click install overlay. Once installed, you will be navigated back to your dashboard with your newly downloaded stream theme. As you can see, you have new scenes and sources now back in your dashboard. 
On OBS, you'll have to make new scenes by clicking the plus symbol and entering a new scene name. In Sources, you will make a new source by clicking the plus sign and click Image or Browser Source depending on how your overlays are created. You can make overlays at Stream Elements, Player.me, or find copyright free PNGs to use on the internet. If using an overlay link source from Stream Elements or Player.me, you'll need to add a browser source and paste the link in there. You would use a link source overlay if you want to use a corresponding website for alerts. If you have an alert connected to your account already, you can simply use copyright free images. Scenes are your layouts while your sources are the elements inside each scene. Each scene caters to different periods of a stream. The basic five scenes are the bare bones of any stream. Starting soon, which is the first one to five minutes of your stream before you appear on the actual live stream. Live scene, which is when you are live on stream showing your face and chatting with your viewers right before either gaming or interacting with that day's subject. Be right back, which is when you need to take a break or go AFK away from keyboard. Ending soon, which is when you are less than four minutes away from ending the stream. And then offline, which is the last thing your viewers see and can be left on for a couple minutes before ending the actual stream. This also gives you an opportunity to be able to raid another channel by allowing this to stay on a little while longer on your stream. Let's edit the live scene. You will see that each folder opens to elements and sources. In OBS, folders are called groups. These sources are the labels, alerts, chat box, webcam, and game that are shown to your viewers. By double-clicking chat box, you can edit its appearance. You can also hide chat bots and commands in chat from appearing in the chat box in your streams. When shut down sources when not visible is unchecked, this will force the program to always show the chat box and keep it live in the background. This keeps it from clearing but also uses RAM to keep it running. OBS doesn't have this feature as the source file will come from an image or a browser source that is inaccessible from OBS. Let's add a game in the background. On slobs, delete the theme image. Let's add a game capture source. Now, if you are using a two PC setup to stream, you will need to use a different source here to find your game as your source will have to be done through some sort of capture card. This will only work for those using the same PC to stream and game. So letting you guys know that now. For slobs and OBS, click on the plus mark and add game capture. Under mode, click capture specific window. Under window, click the game that is playing in the background. It will be mode in OBS. You will need to have launched the game to make sure it will work properly. It should be in the background as you're doing this before you go live. Under window match priority, click match title. Otherwise, find window of same executable. You should see the game become visible in the preview window above. Make sure to uncheck capture cursor. Once done, you can stretch the source to the corners of the screen or simply click on the actual source or click on the element Click transform, then fit to screen to perfectly cover the scene. Lock the game capture and drag it down to the bottom. Make sure not to drag it into other folders as you will easily misplace it. Look for the divider that clearly dictates it's not falling into a folder. Now let's add a webcam. Click on the plus sign in sources and click video capture device and then add source. Make sure to add a new source. Type webcam to name the source, click add source, click on the drop down near device, and click on your webcam. If you don't see the webcam here, you will need to troubleshoot your webcam. Make sure it's plugged into your computer and your computer has the webcam drivers associated with the manufacturer. You should leave everything else as it is. Click done. We will cover streaming settings like audio and mic in video too though. If you got to this point in the video, congratulations! You are well on your way to going live on Twitch. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to let us know your thoughts and comments below. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be updated 
when the next video is live. Thanks again for watching. I am Erin. And I'm Nars, and we will see you in the next video.